Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Yuling Chen from Cisco. Together with me, Prem Shankar from Ericsson. And today we are going to present this topic of open daylight based machine learning for networks. Um, I believe everyone went to yesterday's keynotes from Dave Myers uh, about uh, machine learning for networks. And here we share the same view. We believe currently most SDM products are using static control of uh, traffic in the network, right? And we believe the next generation of SDN needs to be dynamic control of the network based on the status, the current status in the network. Um, we believe we would need to leverage machine learning in this case. So a little bit background of ODL Miller World Group. Um, it was established March this year from ONS Summit. Uh, Prem and I delivered a speech uh, talking about this idea and after that we kind of had about 10 people interested in this topic and we started to work on that. Uh, similar to, you know, machine learning in networking is still in very early stage, so are we. We are in also very early stage too. So today we would like to present some early activities including POC demos, you know, for um, this topic. Okay, first we would like to talk about uh, the contributors to this project. Uh, as always, people are always very, the most important thing for the project. Um, we have contributors from Cisco, myself, uh, Pram from Ericsson, and TCS. I would like to mention two very important people, uh, Rashmi and Razi, who did a lot of PLC work you know, for, for this project, and Xflow Research also actively working on this. And I, need, I would like to uh, hand it over to Pram to talk about why we need machine learning ODL. Okay, thanks, Yuling. Um, so uh, the main context in which we wanted to uh, bring in the machine learning was, uh, for example, uh, if you look at open daylight, um, you have a uh, lot of data coming in from various modules, right? Um, so if you look at open daylight, it started as a SDN controller, but today you have close to 45 plus applications. The amount of data they deal with is enormous, right? Um, so what is that we wanted to do was we wanted to probably leverage the data that are produced by various these modules and then uh, build or provide an API layer above open daylight so that it, people can use uh, it as a platform. For example, to begin with, you can have uh, supervised learning, then you can move on to su unsupervised learning. Uh, okay, so before that, I just want to un understand uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, the machine learning basics so that, okay, one, two, three, four, okay. So, um, so probably I'll spend five minutes just to touch base on what machine learning is and then uh, I'll probably move on to the topic. Um, so machine learning, as the name suggests, is basically making the machine uh, do some uh, uh, autonomous decision making. Um, so for that to make, you basically, I mean it's similar to that of how we learn, right? So how do we learn? We basically learn uh, based on standard set of resources and then over the period of time we do course correction to whatever we learned, right? After a certain stage, unconsciously, of course, we cannot compare brain to that of a typical processor, but then just to say how we behave, we tend to sort of get more and more external data and then we uh, become super intelligent, right? Depending upon the area you are in, right? So similarly, machine learning is an area where you're trying to make the machine, analyze the data, train them, with standard set of, of course, there are standard techniques to train them. One famous one is the artificial neural network, and there are a bunch of them depending upon the use case, right? And then what you do is you basically uh, look at how it has learned, then provide its input, and then after a certain stage, it becomes more autonomous in nature, and which means that it can do things by itself, right? Just to give an example, um, if you remember uh, around uh, March last uh, this year, uh, there was a famous uh, uh, announcement about uh, AlphaGo, uh, AlphaGo game player, the, the uh, machine learning system that was developed by Google, Beta uh, Go player, who was uh, well known uh, or who was famous, right? And then the interesting part is uh, they did an analysis on how the player lost the game. Um, looks like uh, since the uh, AlphaGo uh, was trained with huge data set and also the data generation was basically what they did was they created two instances of, of AlphaGo and then they made it uh, fight with each other so that there was a lot of data that gets generated during those games. So there was a move that 
as a human, uh, you would think it is not intelligent, right? But then that made the difference in the game, right? So that's just an example where and how people are leveraging machine learning, right? Um, so coming to our, our uh, relevance, right? So as I was mentioning, uh, what are the key things in our, uh, in our scenarios, right? One is we say that the controller needs to be intelligent, right? So which means that what happens is when you look at a typical infrastructure requirements, right? Uh, soon most of the enterprises are moving towards more of a cloud-based, be it a private cloud or public cloud. In that case, when they go on a service model, the key important thing is the ability to uh, look at or predict what would be the request that would come in. For example, Amazon Web Service, right? The number of requests that come in is in millions, right? Which means that it's going to grow exponentially, but how is that they are going to manage or understand their infrastructure need or how are they going to plan it? So that's one of the important scenario wherein if you look at from a relevance of machine learning, that's one other uh, area what we can look at. So what is that we want to do is, um, as it mentioned, so the SDN when it means is, uh, it has to be intelligent. Today, SDN, in a way, what happens is you have an orchestrator. Um, it's mostly machine driven, right? Wherein he knows that this is how the network has to be. And in case of fault, he basically goes and debugs the fault, fixes it, and then so on and so forth. In fact, there was an article around uh, two months back where a person wrote that soon the data center would be automatic. In the sense, what is meant by automatic is you would essentially see that the human intervention, those small human interventions that are needed today is going to go away, right? So what is that that is needed? So one is DevOps, okay? So from a DevOps perspective, what it does is DevOps essentially simplifies the provisioning as well as configuration of the various components, be it compute, be it network, be it storage, right? Next is ability to foresee a possible issue coming into that of the uh, system, right? What is meant by that? For example, let me give an example. Um, in case of uh, our scenario in Ericsson, right? Uh, we do have a lot of virtual network functions deployed, right? Uh, in the conventional model, what happens is a failure is detected. Post the failure, we tend to act on it, right? For example, a typical case would be some network has gone down. Typically, it's human's nature to keep trying, keep trying, right? Because you are in a panic mode and you keep trying, right? So which means what happens is the number of calls that lands on it exponentially increases. The system is going down, but the re service or request that's coming on it is exponentially going, right? Can it be solved, right? Yes, why not? The first step is look at the patterns that causes the failure, right? Which means that collect those data set much in early, give it to that of the machine learning, right? Which means that by that what happens is you know that from a set of patterns that you know that it's going to, a problem is on the making, right? A simple thing, for example, you use Windows, right? So when you have so many of your processor applications spawn, you see that there is a memory peaking, right? So in earlier days, it used to be the next stage would be blue screen of death, right? But now it's a different scenario. But what I'm trying to say is you do see that the system is melting down, right? Can you preempt it before and take action, right? Yes, you can do or you can take action. So the idea is use such instances or use such data that is used for debugging system, feed it to the system, and then you are able to predict or preempt a possible failure, right? So these are some of the examples in which uh, what we wanted to leverage. And as I was mentioning, we wanted to make ODL the brain of the network, right? So. If you look at the solution, some of the solutions what we have in the market is SDN is used, being used for as a cloud SDN controller. What is meant by cloud SDN controller is it provides or it manages the network for a cloud provider, right? So in that case, there are a bunch of things like tenant isolation, tenant prediction, so on and so forth. You do get it. So look at the sheer number of modules you have. For example, you do have TSDR. Uh, the project basically is meant for it it stands for time series data repository. 
it collects data from SNMP, it collects from various uh, sources and it does archives and does analytics based on it. Then you have group based policy, you have VPN service which talks about the cloud SDN, then you have SFC, uh, then you have topo processing. So all of the, it's just a sample set of the applications what you have in open daylight, right? Uh, let's take GBP, right? So if you look at group based policy, what is it about? It talks about creating a relationship between two entities, right? A simple thing, for example, if you look at a simple misconfiguration, if you're familiar with uh, uh, like a BGP, uh, VPN type of thing, uh, there is a concept called, there are two parameters. Those two parameters are the parameters that differentiate between one tenant to another tenant. A small misconfiguration is basically going to screw up the whole system or the traffic is going to be uh, mapped to some other customer network, right? But if you can train the system, the system can look at it and then identify whether the configuration is right or not, right? And then can preempt, right? Next is uh, uh, VPN service. As I was mentioning, we have a lot of data coming out of VPN service. The main essence of VPN services is to create network virtualization which includes tenant isolation, right? So what happens in case of tenant isolation, we do create environment. For example, if you are an enterprise, if you are familiar with AWS VPC, virtual private connection, we provide a similar facility, right? Which means that there is a lot of data that gets generated by VPN service, which you can use for cloud resource uh, planning. Uh, so I can go on. Uh, and go on and what you want, so these are some of the example. So one is traffic control and routing optimization. For example, you can do a uh, predictive congestion control, traffic pattern prediction, routing op optimization, uh, resource optimization, whatever I was mentioning. So network resource allocation and optimization, cloud resource management optimization. This is an interesting one, security and anomaly detection. For example, DDoS attack detection wherein, uh, in fact, uh, a key thing in DDoS attack is when you're a cloud provider, you would suddenly get a request for say uh, 1,000 or 2,000 VM requests, let's assume, right? If you don't train the system properly or even if you have a simple analytic mechanism, you would essentially think it is a DDoS attack because you're being flooded with some request, right? But if you have a machine learning system, you can basically correlate sources or information from other things and then you can take a decision and then say, no, this is basically a genuine request coming in from one of the uh, tenant, right? And other thing is, of course, troubleshooting and self-healing. When I say self-healing, look at the existing logs. For example, you have a bunch of information being spewed out of the uh, log files. Take it as an input and then you can basically guide in troubleshooting. So. Uh, this is the essence in which we wanted to build, so probably Yuling will continue on the framework. Right. Thank you very much, Pam. So again, this is a very ex simple example we actually presented last summer. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see there's a network, whether it's virtual or physical, doesn't really matter, but you can see from A, a to F, there are multiple paths, right? If we have an algorithm, we can predict in the next 24 hours there will be congestion between A and F, and we can change the configuration of the network and reconfigure uh, the policy so that we rebalance the traffic so that this congestion wouldn't happen. So that's the kind of simple example of, app, of leveraging the data we collected from network and the algorithm, machine learning algorithm um, on the data. So inspired by this Simple example, um, as Miller Work Group, at the very early stage of Miller Work Group, we did some, actually did some experimentation on this topic. Uh, what we did was relying on ODL TSDR, we collected um, the interface metric, SNMP interface metric, and then feed to Weka, which I believe quite a lot of people probably know about this tool. Um, we feed to Weka, uh, it's a Java-based machine learning tool and used the four different types of algorithms and generated the result for the prediction in the next 24 hours. And we can see actually in this diagram a Gaussian and SMOREG 
a kind of little better in this way. But does that mean the goal of uh, Miller work group is looking at the algorithm, optimize the algorithm? The answer is no. Then we talk about what are the goals of ODL Miller work group. We believe that the goals of this work group are two perspectives. One is to adapt SDN architecture to machine learning requirements. Um, specifically, uh, we would like to provide an application framework for machine learning ODL in SDN. And then we would like to look at how do we add necessary components for intelligence or knowledge play. Um, in research area, uh, there have been already some paper published talking about what constructs, you know, components need to be added into SDN in order to support machine learning. And one of them is knowledge play. Because everyone knows that uh, we have data playing and control play and application playing and some talking about management playing. But in order to satisfy the requirements for machine learning, uh, really uh, achieve the intelligence for the network, um, already research paper talking about we need a knowledge playing and intelligence playing there. So we would like, as a work group, we would like to experiment to see what are the actual components we need to add in this intelligence plane. And also we would like to integrate with ODL native uh, network data collection as well as traffic control services to, to make it a you know, holistic end-to-end -end solution for machine learning. Second perspective is we would like to facilitate machine learning application development in ODL. What does that mean is, you know, we, we actually looked at the user group of ODL. We understand there are two types of people. One, um, you know, they are very savvy in machine learning algorithms. They are professors, they, they know about the machine learning algorithm, they would like to experiment, optimize the algorithm itself, right? That's one type of people. The other type of people and most uh, of the users of ODL, they are network professionals. They are not machine learning experts, right? In, in order to satisfy the need um, and also to facilitate application development from those major groups, we believe we would like to, you know, first we want to integrate with third party machine learning algorithms, libraries, to make it natively available from ODL. And secondly, we would like to provide abstract and generic northbound interfaces for machine learning applications. For example, if uh, the application developer would like to say, I, I, I would like to predict. Um, the traffic congestion, bandwidth utilization uh, for port one or for the link one, right, uh, between port one and port B, uh, port one and port two, and say, uh, what's the congestion, what's the bandwidth utilization in the next 24 hours? What the interface will look like would be just predict as the operation and port one or port two, um, and then also uh, the matrix bandwidth utilization and the 24 hours. Those should be just the necessary interface and parameters for the user. And the user can just make the call and how internally you know, the machine learning algorithm is picked, is selected, and how do you do the machine learning, the user doesn't need to care about it. So that's the idea of um, you know, facilitating machine learning application development in SDN, in ODL. That's one of the goal of Miller Work Group. And high level in general, we believe that's how it's going to work. At the bottom, you can see this network, right? And we have time series data collection, continuously collect the data from the network. And then we feed it to the advanced analytics and machine learning, this construct. And that's going to be the uh, ODL, we believe that's the ODL uh, AI ML framework. And then after analyzing and applying the machine learning uh, algorithms, it's going to generate the result and then feed back to other services that Prem just mentioned different types of services that can configure the, uh, the network, can you know, uh, replace the, the policies to make changes and steer the traffic on the fly. So that's in general what we believe going to look like. Uh, sure. So one other thing I want to add here is uh, it's not, you cannot have a template type of thing or you cannot have just one rule apply for all, right? So it, the type of uh, uh, machine learning algorithms that you apply differs from use case to use case. Right? So typically, if you look at how a machine learning or a, how a, a learning happens is you first identify the data that you want to feed it to the system. Right? And you basically label that these are the data sets that I want to 
take it and then input it to the system. So even when you input it, there is a bit of transformation that has to be done, right? So which means the key for any machine learning system is the data that you collect and also the data you want to feed it to the system for analysis. That is step number one. Step number two is analysis of the algorithms that you want to apply for your problem domain, right? For example, you have like umpteen number of uh, machine learning algorithms that are, for example, K clustering, even within A, and then if you take artificial neural networks, it basically creates similar to that of our brain, right? So there are summarization points, and these summarization points has various uh, methods that you apply, and you get the results in a different way, right? So post analysis, you also have a, um, the next stage is what you want to do. What is the decision you want to do? Whether you want to act on it or you want to observe it. Which means there is a bit of feedback that comes into the system and it further uh, builds or improves the uh, ability to predict things in a proper way. Right? Then you basically get into the action. Right? So as Yuling was saying, our intent was to create a framework for it. Which means that for example, if you have an algorithm, you can bring it, you can tap onto the data points, have it designed and then check it in into a sort of like a library wherein you can say that and tag it, uh, wherein you can just a second. So wherein you can always say that, hey, this particular problem domain, this is the type of uh, algorithms I will use. That is one. Second thing is, again, data can be historic data and real time data. So when I say historic data, most of the uh, mission uh, or most of the infrastructure was based on historic data, which means that your data would be probably uh, a week old or two weeks old, right? The other model is streaming data, wherein you, for example, there are uh, infrastructure like Spark MLlib. Uh, Spark is basically a, a real-time um, um, based, I would say, like a, like a Hadoop type of thing, wherein it basically uh, processes the stream data and then it does it. It also has a machine learning plugin. If you plug it in, you can process the real-time uh, real data. So we were planning to have both offline data or historic data as well as the real-time data. So that's our intent of this whole framework. Mm -hmm. So can we skip the, uh, to the very end because we are running out of time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, um, because we still have a demo to show. Um, I'm going to talk about the constructs a little bit and very quickly. Time series data repository, good news is uh, it's already the third release now. Starting from Lithium, we have started to develop it. And I'm not going to talk about the details. The architect all posted online. So from historical, like Prem said, historical machine learning, uh, offline machine learning point of view, it's pretty much ready, the data, right? Um, but then we are going to talk about how the Miller framework the, the architecture is still high level, how that's going to look like and what is missing and what we are exploring right now, right? Um, again, ODL AI ML framework is, you know, talking to both the time series data uh, collection piece as well as other ODL services. Uh, one side is to get the status of, uh, of the network. And as Prem just mentioned, there are two data paths we would like to enable. One is historical. Because when we look at machine learning um, algorithms, three types, uh, offline, online, and reinforcement, right? And then they need two different types of data. One is historical, there. For offline machine le learning, typical uh, way is they are going to look at the historical data and train the model based on um, the data over the time. So that's why we need the historical data to collect it in a scalable way to provide to those machine learning algorithms. But at the same time, there's online machine learning, which can, you know, get the data on the fly all the time, continuously. And this one, we, we need the real-time data uh, directly and on the fly right away from the network. And for that, we believe we need um, an architecture to enable that. And here, we are exploring Kafka and Spark together to provide that capability. And based on that, we have an architecture that's a POC architecture. Again, we are not designing the uh, framework yet, but instead we are exploring the technology to see how do we integrate together with ODL. Okay, and then particularly, I'm going to show a very short demo uh, in a minute. What we did was, you know, using an OpenV switch, MinNet simulated OpenV switch. It's going through the OpenFlow uh, stats data collector. Uh, TSDR provides that, so it collects the data 
On one hand, it feeds to ODL TSDR data repository as historical data. And on the northbound, we have RESTful APIs. And then there's the offline machine learning module that's going to query the, the data from ODL TSDR through the RESTful APIs. And after it gets the data, it applies, in our case, Spark ML lib. We're using that library, using keyming clustering, a very simple algorithm, apply on the, um, it's a, specifically the flow size metric we collected from OpenVSwitch, and then we categorize into different um, clusters and show it visually. So that's one POC we've done, which, which I'm going to show in a minute. And the, the, the second one is still, we collect the data from the Mininet OpenVSwitch, but we push to Kafka bus. And at the same time, the offline machine learning, uh, the online machine learning module is going to consume the data directly from the Kafka bus, and then again call Spark ML lib, gaming clustering uh, library, that, that algorithm, and construct RDD, the resilient um, distributed data set, and send to Spark streaming. And Spark streaming can process data based on the algorithm in parallel, in memory, and eventually send out the result uh, as clusters, the categories of flow size, and visualize it. Um, I'm going to show the first one now. So this is a recorded demo. The first one you can see is the carafe console. And here we install ODL TSDR, TSDR HSQL DB all. And with that, we install both the HSQL DB data store as well as the OpenFlow stats collector. So after we install that, it will start to collect the data from OpenVSwitch. And at the same time, our TSDR list will show, okay, the data already collected okay, in row format. And then the Mininet here, what we show is already we have a Mininet simulated OpenVSwitch pushing data to ODL collected by TSDR, so that's one thing. This is the very simple application we created for offline learning, and it uses curl commands to query the data from uh, TSDR, and then apply uh, Spark ML lib gaming clustering on the data and visualize it. So this shows the flow size categories into three clusters. The lo lower one is the small size, the middle one is medium size, and upper top one is the large size. So you can see the activity on different time. So uh, each chart shows every five minutes how this flow looks like. So it starts from this is the first one and second one and third one and the fourth one. We can see this is a starting point because lots of uh, uh, dots, zero, very small. And it started picking up in the, in the middle and then eventually stabilized as this, so which means most of the time, it stays in the medium size here, stable. So that's the simple um, example POC we did, try to test the architecture there. So that pretty much concludes our, our uh, presentation and demo, and this is the last one, as information and contacts. Yeah, and the biggest challenge what we have is data. The availability of real-time data is key to harden or to conclude on any mach particular machine learning algorithm or a pattern. So, so that's one thing if you want to use machine learning, you need to have a data set, a real data set uh, so that you can train your system. Yeah, now we take questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Could you go back to that uh, last architecture diagram? Okay, essentially, as far as ODL is concerned, the current architecture, are you opening any new API for ODL or are you using existing API? Currently, this exercise using existing API. Yeah. This is the TSDR Northbound Rest, RestConf API, yeah. right? Um, but that's not the design or the API for ODL AIML framework. We are not there yet. The, the API I talked about as abstract and uh, generic that's something else, yeah. But you, uh, you have indeed the batch processing and the real-time streaming data, yeah? Right, these are two different paths. So one and is a real-time path and another one is a batch processing path. The, the tools that are today, the tools that are today, 
that are available, like ha Adam, yeah. Mm -hmm. are you Hadoop is actually a batch processing. Yeah. So. Are, are you bringing that as part of the historical data or not? We're using HBase as one of the ODL TSDR, TSDR. repository. HBase is built on top of Hadoop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the fine grained data is real. Yes. Yes, so that's the like right. streaming, that's streaming data. data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a question. Yes. Right. To build anything in the OEL, actually, the findings of the OEL are not necessary to do. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, the whole plane, the data plane, once you put the data sources into the knowledge plane, it's a separate entity, and that's a separate process. Right. That's not only taking data from the other two planes, but also taking some digital information. Yes. The Super Bowl's coming next Sunday, so it's back more traffic. Right. And, and so, what are you actually planning to change in OEL versus keeping okay. Well, the Super Bowl is a very interesting point. I mean, that's uh, always a, a challenge because whatever you monitor, you analyze, you model, right, it's on a normal basis. Whenever that exceptional case happens, it's really hard for any algorithm to capture. So that's why in my earlier di diagram, I have a user input or external data external that data. should add on top of whatever the data from the network, right? So, so that's, that's a separate yeah. topic. So that's the main, mm -hmm. the main intent of keeping the user uh, path is essentially to get external data sources so that your correlation is perfect. For example, another simple thing is you can also tap into Celometer to get like whether there's a VM creation, there's a massive VM creation and feed it onto it so that you can correlate your network uh, traffic pattern to that of it so that you don't melt down when there is a sudden request of VMs coming in. So yes. Yes. And you don't try to put a bunch of stuff in OEM. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yes. and one other point to add is we also spoke with uh, a Smartnik vendor wherein uh, they were basically having their own um, like a data collector type of thing. What they do is they collect the data. They don't just uh, punt it up because the volume is so high. They do a bit of uh, cleaning up or analysis and then they feed it uh, to the top layer. For example, in case of this is a SDN controller or ODL. So, so these are different patterns wherein the amount of data that gets generated is huge and then you need to do a bit of cleaning at the source point so that you get the relevant data. That's one of the things. So I think the same question, like if you have that group in here in the learning process, right? Yes. Which is going to generate a model. Yes. Okay, so why do you have to mind how you want to deploy those models? Where are you going to deploy those models? Have we thought to that? Yeah, we did. Like Prem mentioned earlier, and we also presented that in uh, when us. Um, we we are thinking about having a repository, algorithm repository, so that uh, we can register, allow the registration of different algorithms. So. Mm -hmm. So that would be user based, right? Because yes. it, this essentially becomes an application, right? Right. So wherein, for example, you can essentially look at the existing repository and then just instead of building your own thing, if something satisfies, you can just pull it and then plug it into the system. So, uh, so there are different models that we are evaluating. And then uh, the idea is, in fact, we were looking at TensorFlow also to be a plug into the system. Yeah. Um, so that uh, TensorFlow does have all the facilities for this. Uh, so that you can leverage on TensorFlow uh, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Different libraries we're looking Different at. Uh, Spark MLlib is one of them, and uh, Deep Learning for J is another, and another TensorFlow end. is a third one. And eventually, we want to, you know, uh, integrate with as many as uh, libraries as possible to provide uh, the algorithms as much as, as many as possible to 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 the northbound, so that application can use and develop their applications. I still believe the prediction of the congestion would be very important. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. one and we were also thinking of DDoS attacks. Yeah. So There's also collaboration that we are doing with uh, um, you know, universities looking at the optimization of the routing on overlay using using uh, machine learning. Yeah. Data of the data, like you said, right? Eighty percent of the time if you're doing data analysis, you spend three and a half data, but that's what it is. Are you 
Could be down the road. I mean, especially from the TSDR, we have some modules in the future to see if we can do some pre-processing of the data, cleansing of the data, you know, can kind of uh, expose the plugins for the user to say, okay, for particular use case, what kind of logic you want to insert for cleaning up the data, for uh, pre-processing the data. It's possible, yeah. I understand, but that's one source of data. Are talking about Yes, so another thing is we believe with that data repository, so that was the idea for TSDR, because now we already collect the data from NetFlow, SFlow, from um, OpenFlow, right, from Syslog. The idea is really have all different data sources putting together, and we created a common data model. So just like different uh, people talking different languages, right, you can, it's hard for you to um, generate intelligence, but if we c make them into one data model, it's very easy for correlation to happen. Yeah, so that's the same idea. If we have user data, external data, if we can massage something to common data model, we can do correlation based on that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Are you talking about the streaming part? Yeah, why not have it definitely. The end of the streaming back to TSDR as I massage the data, some first and out, first run that one. Well, whether we feed back to TSDR, that's another question because um, we can talk about that because this part, this part, the second pass, we definitely will, we should build it for the streaming because it's missing right now. Yeah, it could be possible. Up to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty much outside. Yeah, there. definitely. Yeah. After you process it, I generate something and push back. Yeah. So there was one of the. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I, I think you mentioned there's a research paper. Do you have a reference? Yeah, I can send you reference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Parallel projects? Panda, Panda project. No, we, uh, mm, Panda, it's a good thing. That's another question. We can talk offline. Yeah. yeah. There, there has been some um, consideration exactly. Talking about you know uh, integrate with Panda. Panda. Yep. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can definitely feed to Panda. Yeah. That was the uh, consideration, and it might happen. Yeah. Sorry, you mean any So any, any other, like, for example, any data source from which you can tap in, for example, instead of we collecting the data, mm. can we look at other data sources they collect and then? Ah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. TSDR already opened the northbound, say, add metrics, which means uh, whatever data collector you have, you can call the northbound API from TSDR to feed into mm. TSDR. And then that becomes one more addition kind of data source, right, in the same repository. Yeah, we've already opened that API. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, is the oh yeah, is that an existing project or is it proposed from TSDR is already there for the third release. Um, this one is not a proposed project yet. It's a work group We're working on POC prototypes right now. Based on TSDR, it's an extension to TSDR. Yeah, it's an extension to TSDR at this moment, and um, and also as open source projects, open source work, work groups. We welcome everyone to join us, you know, so that we can grow. And also bring data. Comes. Yeah, yeah, bring data too. Yeah, that's another thing. We we like to have the original data to help us with the with the project. Yeah. Is there the possibility to start integrating data? Yes. All right. 
Yes. Uh, not the data, the, the source code is there probably. Data you can. We have share. source. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. yeah, we can talk. Yeah. We can create one if needed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. Definitely. All right. Thanks, everyone, for Thank coming. You. Thank thanks. you. Thank you. That we kind of had about 10 people interested in this topic, and we started to work on that. Uh, similar to, you know, machine learning in networking is still in very early stage. So are we. We are in also very early stage, too. So today we would like to present some early activities, including POC demos, you know, for um, this topic. Okay, first we would like to talk about uh, the contributors to this project. Uh, as always, people are always very, the most important thing for the project. Um, we have contributors from Cisco, myself, uh, Pram from Ericsson, and TCS. I would like to mention two very important people, uh, Rashmi and Razi, who did a lot of PLC work you know, for, for this project, and Xflow Research also actively working on this. And I, need, I would like to uh, hand it over to Pram to talk about why we need machine learning ODL. Okay, thanks, Yuling. Um, so uh, the main context when we uh, do some uh, uh, autonomous decision making. Um, so for that to make, you basically, I mean, it's similar to that of how we learn, right? So how do we learn? We basically learn uh, based on standard set of resources, and then over the period of time, we do course correction to whatever we learn, right? After a certain stage, unconsciously, of course, we cannot compare brain to that of a typical processor, but then just to say how we behave, we tend to sort of get more and more external data and then we uh, become super intelligent, right? Depending upon the area you are in, right? So similarly, machine learning is an area where you're trying to make the machine analyze the data, train them with standard set of, of course, there are standard techniques to train them. One famous one is the artificial neural network and there are a bunch of them depending upon the use case, right? And then what you do is you basically uh, look at how it has learned, then provide its input, and then after a certain stage, it becomes more autonomous in nature, and which means that it can do things by itself. Which we wanted to uh, bring in the machine learning was, uh, for example, uh, if you look at open daylight, um, you have a lot of data coming in from various modules, right? Um, so if you look at open daylight, it started as a SDN controller, but today you have close to 45 plus applications. The amount of data they deal with is enormous, right? Um, so what is that we wanted to do was we wanted to probably leverage the data that are produced by various these modules and then uh, build or provide an API layer above open daylight so that it, people can use uh, it as a platform. For example, to begin with, you can have uh, supervised learning, then you can move on to su unsupervised learning. Uh, okay, so before that, I just want to un understand uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, the machine learning basics so that, okay, one, two, three, four, okay. So, um, so probably I'll spend five minutes just to touch base on what machine learning is and then uh, I'll probably move on to the topic. Um, so machine learning, as the name suggests, is basically making the machine... Uh okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Yuling Chen from Cisco, together with me Prem Shankar from Ericsson, and today we are going to present this topic of open daylight based machine learning for networks. Um, I believe everyone went to yesterday's keynotes from Dave Myers uh, about uh, machine learning for networks, and here we share the same view. We believe currently most SDM products are using static control of uh, traffic in the network, right? And we believe the next generation of SDN needs to be dynamic control of the network based on the status, the current status in the network. Um, we believe we would need to leverage machine learning in this case. So a little bit background of ODL Miller World Group. Um, it was established March this year from OMS Summit. Uh, Prem and I delivered a speech uh, talking about this idea and after right. Just to give an example, um, if you remember uh, around uh, March last uh, this year, uh, there was a famous uh, uh, announcement about uh, AlphaGo uh, AlphaGo game player, the, the uh, machine learning system that was developed by Google, better uh, Go player who was uh, well known uh, or who was famous, right? And then the interesting part is uh, they did an analysis on how the player lost the game. 
um, looks like uh, since the uh, AlphaGo uh, was trained with huge data set and also the data generation was basically what they did was they created two instances of, of AlphaGo and then they made it uh, fight with each other so that there was a lot of data that gets generated during those games. So there was a move that as a human uh, you would think it is not intelligent, right? But then that made the difference in the game, right? So that's just an example where and how people are leveraging machine learning, right? 